Anthony Jerome Webb, better known as Spud Webb, one of the shortest, lightest players the NBA has ever seen. Unlike the 5'3 Muggsy Bogues, Spud was not a lottery pick. In fact, he was at the bottom of the draft and barely anyone even looked at him. Spud did not have a decorated college career. He went from a complete unknown in his early days to being one of the most inspirational players ever. Not only from his excellence on the court, but his unlikely journey to the NBA shocked everybody. Because nobody thought he was any good, nobody thought he would play 12 years in the NBA. But he did, and he was pretty damn good too. How's it going folks, my name's Andy, and today, let's talk about Spud Webb, the 5'7", 130-pound point guard. In his early years, Spud always had an interest in basketball. With five other siblings, Spud was on the shorter end of the spectrum, but he would routinely play against the older, taller kids in his neighborhood. And every time, he would impress the local community with his ridiculous vertical. Even at a young age, he was quite gifted, his athleticism and jumping ability stood out. When he finally accomplished his first dunk, it was absolutely magical. It's described here in his biography. One day, after trying countless times to dunk, the skinny teenager grabbed a basketball and started running towards the basket. He soared into the air, cleared the ground by more than four feet, and dunked the basketball through the hoop with two hands. Those who witnessed Spud's dunk that day realized that he was a special basketball player. At that time, he was only 5'3 when he did that. Unfortunately, even in high school, it was very rough. His vertical was not enough, and due to his small stature, the team's coaches did not have much faith in him, and did not let him even try out for the varsity team. Which is kinda reasonable, I mean, his height was a major deterrent preventing him from doing so. Even on the junior high school team, Spud had to fight for minutes, but when he was finally given the starting spot, he averaged 26 points per game. That would help him transition to the varsity team in his senior year, where he made his mark and everyone in his hometown of Dallas started to recognize him. By the end of his senior season, Spud would be named Player of the Year, and became only one of 10 players selected to the All-State team, where over 5,000 players were in the running. In the summer of 1981, Spud graduated. Now obviously, he wanted to play Division I basketball, but despite his successful high school career, he garnered very low interest from every Division I college. But unwilling to give up on his dream, Spud enrolled at Midland College and led them to the 1982 National Junior College Championship. He would use this opportunity to attract even more attention from college scouts. And it worked. North Carolina State invited him to a workout and he impressed them enough that they gave him a scholarship. In two seasons at NC State, Spud played well as the starting point guard, but his numbers were not that impressive, at least not as much as other college point guards. So by the 1985 NBA draft, he was not considered as a serious prospect. While he did show a good amount of talent and skills in college, everyone was just skeptical of taking a guy who was 5'7". The NBA is a land of giants, and as a result, Spud fell all the way to the 4th round of the draft, the 87th overall pick. And yeah, there were that many rounds back then. But what was impressive and always stood out was his vertical. He was reported to have a vertical of 46 inches, the best of his draft class by far. As a rookie, in one of the most shocking entrances the league has ever seen, Spud Webb announced that he would enter the slam dunk contest. Not only did this surprise literally everyone, but it also surprised his teammate, Dominique Wilkins, who was actually the slam dunk champion in the previous year. Dominique said that he didn't even know Spud could dunk. Here are some of Spud's dunks in the contest. Spud would defeat him with two perfect 50-score dunks in the final round. 
Some would say he did not deserve to win and that maybe he got some extra points for being such a huge underdog, regardless, he won. To this day, he still holds the record for being the shortest NBA player to ever win the slam dunk contest. Yeah, even shorter than Nate Robinson. This contest also took place in his hometown of Dallas, so there were a lot of people rooting for him, if there weren't already. After winning the dunk contest, Spud stated, I've never lost a dunk contest, but I haven't been in many, maybe about 10. I can't describe the dunks, it's just something I go out and do. Leaping is just a god-given talent and it's something I try to keep. As you can tell, the confidence was always there, and that's the type of attitude he needed to succeed in the NBA, a land of giants. So how good was he in the actual games? Well, for the first six years of his career, he would play for the Hawks. These years, the Hawks were trying to make a deep playoff run, led by, of course, Dominique Wilkins. Spud was the backup point guard behind Doc Rivers, one of the better backups in the league. In his first four seasons, he would average about 6 points and 4 assists in 16 minutes per game. But what he had going for him was his consistency. With players of his stature, it's pretty uncommon to see them play consistently the same way throughout the year. But Spud was good at doing that because he never tried to do too much. If he wasn't shooting well, he was still valuable as a playmaker. He was good at attacking the rim and looking for gaps in the defense to take advantage of. He never shot the ball too much or shot his team out of the game, nor did he try anything fancy that was out of his comfort zone. Spud was simply a solid point guard. Eventually, by 1990, he would work his way into the starting lineup. Unfortunately, while the Hawks sported their best rosters of the 1980s, they could not get any further than the second round. It was not their decade, as teams like the Celtics and Pistons dominated the Eastern Conference. The Hawks were a great team, just not good enough. Fast forward to the 1991-92 season, Spud would join the Sacramento Kings as the full-time starter, and had the best individual years of his career. For the next four years, he would average nearly 14 points and 7 assists per game. He would continue to play like his usual self as even though he got a bigger role, he was still the consistently mild player we've always seen. Always trying to defer to his teammates and realizing that there are more prominent scorers on his own team. While these were the best statistical seasons he had, the Kings were not making the playoffs. And Spud was not a guy who could carry an entire team either. Maybe his talents could have been used elsewhere, and perhaps he wasted the best years of his career on a team that was not contending. By 1996, Spud could no longer keep up this level of play. He would play sparingly for a few teams off the bench and even made an appearance in Italy, playing one season overseas. By 1998, he retired. The journey and career of Spud Webb was quite an interesting one. Pretty much everyone knows him for his height and winning the dunk contest, but nothing else really. Nobody knew the struggles he had to go through, being told that he was too small by so many coaches in high school and college. But he shunned all that noise. All those distractions did not stop him from chasing his dream, and by the end of it all, he was legitimately a solid point guard. Not a superstar, not a benchwarmer, just a solid player who greatly contributed to every team he played for. Perhaps that's what we should really remember him for. A guy who was heavily doubted throughout his life and got picked at the bottom of the draft, with very few teams even looking at him. Yet he still played over 800 games in the NBA. Since he got drafted in 1985, there's only been two other NBA players shorter than he was. Muggsy Bogues and Earl Boykins. Maybe I'll make a video about them in the future. When asked about his size and how he plays around it, Spud said, I don't play small. You have to go out and play with what you have. I admit, I used to want to be tall. But I made it in high school, college, and now the pros. So it doesn't matter. Anyway, that's all folks. That sums up the story and career of Spud Webb. Let me know your thoughts on him in the comment section. How much did you know about his career before watching this video? And what are your thoughts on him now? 
Thank you everybody so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, of course, I'll see you next time. Peace.